I think this is the most casual you've ever done. The pod- you look like <laughs> you look like you're like in a casket. <laughs> your, your hair slicked back. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to look like how he does because yeah. it is very <laughs> awkward. Yeah, this will be a competition to see who can keep this shit on the longest. Because like, and TJ, it's gonna be TJ. Yeah, because it's a two person race. Well, yeah, the only I think thing it might is be. if I if I get like if doing the show in it's more like the position for me. Yeah, not that it's like uncomfortable, but it might just be <laughs> right really awkward. Yeah, because these are not uh, prescription spirit Halloween steampunk goggles. Oh, so yeah. like, I got I could see okay. I just saw some pumpkin bits fall out. Yeah, of I'm sure there's a lot. <laughs> also, my mouth is like way high. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. What day is this coming out on? Whatever that Wednesday is. Uh, twenty sixth. I oh, want to yeah. say. I'm not sure. Close enough. You let us know. You'll yeah, know because it'll yeah. be the day. My name. Hmm? I thought I heard a voice. Hello. I think that was just her whining. No, I heard a voice. This is... Well, I don't like this. This is spooky, guys. <laughs> I don't like this. Oh. Someone did the puzzle and summoned me. <laughs> it's like the... <laughs> the puzzle box from Burger King. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Yes. Toast. A toast. <laughs> oh. <coughs> okay, there's to- that. Toast for the ghosts. <laughs> toast to the ghosts. Oh, he's trying to get his cup. <laughs> yep, there we go. I got it. I got it. I can barely fucking see this. <laughs> yep, all right. It turns out turns out traditional uh <laughs> sticking it in jack o' lantern proportions. Are not human face proportions. Who, who <laughs> knew? I always thought those were just guys. There you go. There you go. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt to drink this. <laughs> I want to see it just spill all over the front of you. I'm pretty sure my pumpkin just broke. I heard it like click. Oh, like you're. Like... I heard my pumpkin oh, head. Yeah. Just oh, it did. <laughs> your, yeah. this list. your chin burst. <laughs> <off>. <laughs> Well, hey, now you can just kind of tilt it up, and then you can drink. Yeah, they give me like a cool visor. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks like a battle helm when you have when your eyes <laughs> yeah. are peeking through the the thing. Uh, all right, all right, let's do it. I feel like I just got pulled through a tube sock. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, this is welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to. Another episode of There Will Be Duds. This what episode is, number is it? It's episode Halloween. <laughs> episode 31 for October 31st. <laughs> Baby Jesus' birthday. This is episode 69. Um, yep. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Were you waiting for one of us to say yeah. nice? Yeah. <laughs> we just left you hanging. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm your co-host TJ, aka Juice by Jack Cheese, and with me as always, as always, I'm Nick, aka Doctor Funk on Twitch, aka Butterball, and with me as always, I am uh, Connor, aka Bingo Bronson on Twitter. Um, and as always. We watched a movie. It's Halloween. <laughs> um, that movie being Vampire's Kiss. Oh, shit. <laughs> you are too casual. You're too comfortable right now. <laughs> From, uh, now I'm trying to look up the shit. I think Vampire's Kiss is the movie that we I did. Think. 1988. 88, directed by Richard Bierman, I think oh. was the name that I remember. From Robert Bierman. Robert Sorry. Bierman. Sorry, Robert. Um, it follows a, a a boss man at some business in New York um, who uh, has a, a... Bat fetish. Yeah, has a bat fetish, apparently. And he has a 
a one night stand with a woman who is a vampire or he thinks is a vampire or something and she bites him and he believes he is turning into a vampire um and he's also looking for a file he's yeah. he's, he's <laughs> he really wants his assistant to find a he contract to find that file it's really about data management yeah that's the subtext of the movie this is um, actually uh predicting the crypto boom <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah it's a uh, that's mo- that's that's mostly it he thinks he's turned into a vampire and he's looking for a file e- um high energy as <laughs> always <laughs> we got some undead air this halloween <laughs> <laughs> uh why does no one wants to take it away i mean this movie is the the entertainment value the enjoyment value is like it's it's almost a hundred percent Nick Cage's performance. Yeah, there's there's nothing too egregiously awful about you know like it's it seems like a movie to come out of Hollywood. Like yeah, there is camera movement and direction. It is, it is one of the movies music. that have ever been made. <laughs> but it's it's not like other duds we watch where there's like clear like shitty editorial yeah, like editing yeah. mistakes or sound issues and like it's not perfect technically but it's like you know it's it's, it's your average done yeah it's your average kind of movie although there was a scene where you could see a guy in the reflection of a mirror that i think was part of the crew oh yeah yeah so, that's I right mean, but that other than that yeah i'm sure there's like i said it's not it's not i'm not saying it's a perfect movie yeah. i'm just saying it's like your average hollywood movie but it's like there's then they decided to cast and cast Nicolas Cage as the lead and just <laughs> let him do his fucking thing and he does. They let daddy cook. Yeah. <laughs> it is like a wild just completely unhinged. Un yeah. Um in a movie with relative like nobodies or at least nobody that I I recognized. I mean, I'm not I feel like nobodies might be a bit reductive. Yeah. But like there's other than Jennifer Beals is in it. She's I'm she's the the vampire. She's from like Flashdance and stuff. Oh okay. So like okay. You know, so at the time that was no, probably like oh shit, Jennifer Beals is in this. Yeah yeah. Um. So yeah, so this the wild lead performance just seems it's just so fucking bizarre that like that's what they would do for this lead character, but also. And, like, that's the thing that I think makes this movie fit in with the duds. Even though, like, I don't know if I would say it's, like, a bad... Is it a bad performance? I don't know. But also, like, this movie, if it wasn't Nicolas Cage, if they cast, like, I don't know... John Cusack or something. Yeah, or something. And they just did kind of a... Took the same material and just approached it. I think it would have been... It would have been boring. I think this movie would be completely forgotten. Yeah. Like... Nobody would know that this movie I, exists. The, the, you say that, and I, f- I feel like it would be like one of those 2010s remakes of just like an iconic action movie, like a like, like Robo Point Cop Break or, or one yeah, of those, Robo any Cop. of those. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Point Break, a- any of those that they just like get completely by the wayside, left by the wayside. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's almost. I mean. Looking at it in terms of good or bad for Nicolas Cage, it's almost like the the wrong set of parameters to even like think about. Yeah. He's like an alien, yeah. like that crash lands on a planet, and he only knows how to like blend in by doing the most exaggerated. Like he's like, oh, I've seen people do this in the yeah. in the movies, so I'm gonna be like wacky yeah. and like it's. I'm it's a Im- person. It's impossible to say his performance is bad. Because there's really not a metric or like yeah. yardstick to measure it up against. <laughs> because it's Alva was not you, bad. She was fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Mo- most of the support. Well, there's really only like yeah, two or handful. three supporting cast, yeah. and they were all like serviceable, serviceable and yeah. thus forgettable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> I would say that his accent is like a supporting character in this too. <laughs> yeah, it's its own. This sort of role. East Coast like 
hybrid east uh, coast like east london trumpian like like trump trying to do a british impersonation holy shit but this this really happened but the part this part i don't know if this really happened or i dreamt it later or what i mean i'm fighting this bat off all alone and i'll be damned if i didn't get really turned on is 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 like a, a way to think about it the it's uh i've got to go to the louvre it's you know he enunciates those uh, it's yeah it's like if you did um what's a not not the square root but when you have a number and then you do the little two is it just squared it's a squared yeah squared, yeah, yeah squared okay yeah so it's it is transatlantic squared that's what i was looking for <laughs> okay if yeah it is wholly unique and all all the confusing insane adjectives that you could use to describe it are <laughs> are very appropriate uh yeah. i think the plot i think because uh we watched this earlier today mm-hmm. but this i watched it two days ago so this is like my second viewing mm-hmm. and i think i don't want to say it got better on my second viewing but i think once you know the um the conceit of it's like oh he's actually like not a vampire and he's like mentally unwell it 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 almost feels like it could have been an interesting story but i feel like there's weird you, diversions that kind of don't i don't know they they kind of peter out if they had known how to like lean into the like psychological horror and also <clears throat> yeah the the premise could have been a very interesting psychological horror without Nicolas Cage, but then this would not have been the yeah exactly like, iconic. <laughs> All of my so suggestions weird. for it would make it un, like a normal and better movie, but then it wouldn't it wouldn't be as memorable. Yeah, because yeah. it's like there's all these scenes of him seeing like couples, and he sees them kissing from his office window, mm-hmm. and he's at the like the little diner, and like you yeah. hear the girl behind him say, "She asked, he asked me to marry him," and he gets like, <laughs> "Fucking grease <her." laughs> He gets so mad and leaves. And it's like that's that's kind of what the whole thing's about is like a guy trying to find love, but he goes in all the wrong places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. We're go, gonna, go for it, um, Buttercup. Uh, yeah, I think like the yeah the idea of that like the mental breakdown, but it just it because I've seen this movie three or four times. I think at okay. this point. But it's been a while. Yeah. I remember, you know, most of it. I don't remember, like, the, I guess, him, like, fixating on, like, other, like, relationship people and relationships and, like, little things like that. But um, it still feels like the the writing is not good because it, I, I mentioned a couple times as we were watching it that, like, this whole fucking side plot with Alva and the contract... <laughs> And it's like so <laughs> nondescript. Yeah. It is. It is like how, it's like how Johnny talks about his job at the bank in the room. Yeah. Just like, oh no, I have meetings. I have important business to I do. I gotta get that kind of promotion. Thing. Yeah, like that kind of shit. And it's just you need con- You need to find the contract. The contract. It's in the files. Look in the files. It's alphabetized. <laughs> you shouldn't misfile it. Da, da, da. It's like it was written by a fourth grader who only hears their dad talk about work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just kind of hits all the buzzwords, but doesn't really know what any of it means it, or how to work it into a serviceable plot. Just yeah. keep going. I gotta grab my glasses. And uh, I wonder. Um, I think it was because this is like if you look at it now, it's li- labeled as a horror comedy. Uh, comedy horror or whatever and uh what's going on oh, okay um it's yeah it's labeled as a horror comedy and i'm pretty sure it was like at the time i don't think this is a again to reference the room one of those things where it's like after the fact and he's like oh yeah it was a comedy i think it was at the time and like it's hard to not think that they weren't aware that it yeah of, it, it's a comedy in spite of itself like it's but it, it's not funny where it's meant to be. I I think. Yeah. Well, I definitely think but, there are jokes. 
Yeah. But then Nicolas Cage's performance makes those jokes elevated. That, yeah. That's what I mean. It, there, that's what I was getting at. Is like it's a horror comedy, but like it is only a comedy because of his performance. <laughs> How do you come up with that? Like idea. Like if that was in the like inception like as they were writing the script they're like oh yeah mostly like if you i feel like if you read the script it would mostly play as just kind of like a i guess i wouldn't even say drama but yeah just kind of like an average thing and it's like yeah but we're gonna do we're gonna i want to curate this very specific performance and it's gonna make it into a comedy um but then like the ending like how is that the ending to a comedy? <laughs> yeah. It's so depressing. Yeah, like, if you dark. really think about it, if you're not like, and we were laughing like 20 seconds before when he's in the room going, <laughs> but then he like, yeah, he like very he shockingly does. and brutally gets killed. Yeah. Yeah. After like murdering a random girl and like attempting to like, I'm rape sorry. His, I uh, raped someone last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His therapist is like, oh, that's okay. I'll take care of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You basically watch a man on like the worst day of his life have a breakdown and then get stabbed in the heart by a wooden stake under his couch. Yeah. That's what was comedy in the 20th that's century. That's comedy, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. Yeah. yeah I, feel I, like, I feel like. I feel like. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that's that's kind of what dragged the movie down a little bit for me. Because I, I know this isn't really on our like normal rating scale of like 1 through 10. It's kind of dud or spud. Mm-hmm. But I do think, you know, if we if we were to apply like the normal uh, scale that we mm-hmm. do for like non-duds, I would say, yeah, it's, it's an hour 48. It could have easily probably been like an hour 20 and you could have cut a lot of the Alva stuff, yeah. a lot of the... the the workplace stuff although him like him jumping on her desk and chasing her around it's it's entertaining if not terrifying but i think a lot of that stuff like doesn't really add much to the plot especially because i I thought it looked like they were almost going to make her like a love interest like when she when he first has her come into the office and in his office she's kind of like checking him out and stuff yeah and like Um. it kind of lingers when she it kind of lingers on like her legs as she's like walking out of his office and it you almost think that like he's gonna pursue her or that's gonna be a thing and i guess he does end up pursuing pursuing her but like that stuff probably could have been much leaner and i think this movie would have been better off for it yeah that the that subplot which is ultimately to at least there is a i guess like there's a reason for it and it's all building up to her brother showing up to kill Nicolas Cage but that is such a like it's such a small thing for so much time of the movie devoted to <laughs> this find the find the files find the files find the files and i feel like you could have still had the ending of him dying with something else yeah. you know it could have been anybody that did that or like he could have done it to himself and because then the movie just ends. There's no resolution after it, so there really was no reason that it had to be that guy. The movie ends, and you see like the third or fourth time that they just give you the New York City skyline with yeah. like unsettling music behind it. Yeah, it is. It is like a baffling, <laughs> baffling comedy. It's no inappropriate comedy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I you said like ra- judging it on the rating scale, I'm like. I kind of was, like, going back to that. I was like, yeah, like, I don't know. I was trying to think because, it, because again, except for Nicolas Cage, I I could see this being, like, more of a, a normal cup movie. Yeah. But, and again, I don't even, I don't, like we were saying, like, you can't really say his performance is bad or good, but that is what makes it in the the dutter yeah, spud thing it's a because double, it, it's a it, double-edged sword it makes it impossible to rate it on a like one to ten scale and yeah. on a human taste scale <laughs> yeah because it's like <laughs> i don't know how does that apply to like the rating of them and that's why it, that's his why performance think... elevates it outside the bounds of judgment and sense <laughs> yeah it's kind of like when we were talking about the chronology of like the halloween movies how it was like Halloween the one branches and yeah, but then yeah. it's like there's like normal movies, bad movies, 
dud movies and then completely separate from all of those is just like Nicolas Cage movies. And there's a little bit of overlap. Yeah. Like I'd say Nicolas Cage is more like dramatic roles kind of fit it. Like you think Adaptation, you think Mandy, Pig, like kind of all these other movies that are, are, are more conventional, like dialed in. But there's a handful of these that are just like in a category of their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like it it almost feels wrong to put it in the Dutter Spud because I yeah. don't know like if it's you know where I mean I can it's not like I I have an idea yeah I mean I will say upon my second viewing I I, I think it, I think it's strongest at the beginning hmm. and I feel like it kind of peters out a little bit as the the his mental breakdown like continues it hmm. snips whatever thread there was yeah because I think almost like the again like the room. I've seen The Room so many times that I like, I'm beginning to like unironically like it and enjoy it. Yeah. And it, on my second viewing, the way that it's set up and him just kind of walking around town, he's like, come on, baby, we don't need to go in this cab. It's my kingdom, my lady. Like all that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. But it seems like pretty for- straightforward with like the setup. Yeah. Like he's, he's wacky, but it's not comically wacky mm-hmm. yet. Like he's, mm-hmm. he's charismatic. Roxy! We are not in need of two servers, my lady. This is my kingdom, and my palace is but two blocks from here. Be off! God be damn you fucking mind! God suck it! Be off! Suck it, you fuck! <laughs> and I'm like, oh, is this actually a good movie? <laughs> and then the Alva stuff starts happening, and then it just, it kind of devolves and gets a little repetitive of him, like, being nice to Alva, and then freaking out on her, and then being nice, and then freaking out on her. Yeah, you know, but at the beginning, I was I was like, "Damn, this might actually be a really good movie," and <laughs> I was like, "No, actually, eh, probably not." <laughs> it is really? funny how <sighs> iconic some of the scenes in this are, um, and I I can't think that many people have actually seen it. Oh yeah, like, oh, as we a, have the memes. Yeah, like, but yeah. between all the memes and stuff, yeah. I can't imagine it's that much of a outside of those moments out a staple or pillar of pop culture cinema or anything like that yeah yeah except for like real like so it's heads. it's pretty wild that they've become so oh i see what you mean like how did this get yeah, to be it, how, yeah. how did it become so widespread that everyone's probably seen those Right. You know, and gifts and yeah, memes yeah, and, and, and nobody all that knows stuff. what the movie. What nobody it's from. has yeah, seen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Between this, I feel like there's another one that has a ton of like <clears throat> cage reactions that are that are pretty famous. I, I mean, I, nah, maybe not a ton, but I like I see I'll see some from Deadfall here and there, like yeah. some like reaction gifts of him like laughing in the car or whatever, oh, okay. or, like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. or Matchstick Man. There's there, there's a couple that circulate from that too. Which yeah. is not like as wild of a cage movie, mm-hmm. but were you gonna say something? No, no. Oh, I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess to what to shift the, the conversation off him a little bit, the like because like the only other thing I really made a note on, um, and I I said brought this up to you guys too was it was like the extras, like all the like <laughs> shit all the extras were doing <laughs> in the background. Yeah. There's like it. It was it was very interesting because it was like, like I made the comparison to Kurosawa or like you know even Bong Joon Ho does the same thing too where he just got like thirty people on screen and they're all doing stuff yeah but it felt so like look at this look at what these extras are doing like yeah, yeah. like trying to have them be background but and yet them being like I don't know what I was looking at unless until Nicolas Cage came on the screen yeah. Yeah, yeah, like you get you get the mimes, the mimes. You get the guy coming out of the hotel or like the, the apartment complex with like the weird ass Peter Pan hat. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, are they going? Yeah, are they trying to go for that sort of like, yeah, like Kurosawa kind of like New York they're not, City? They're not just people. Yeah, it's it's not like they came. They showed up to set and they were like, all right, just pretend to be talking and just kind of do whatever in the background. Like we don't care. Mm. It's like as an extra, they were like told what to do like a lot of them actually had lines like some of those scenes at the bar like they could have easily just 80 yard nicholas cage and whoever he was talking to and then like just done ambient bar sounds for everyone Mm -hmm. else and not even included any of that but like people in the bars like 
had lines. They had stuff that they were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make it better? No. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's an interesting choice. Y- yeah. And yeah, like, 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 I don't know if, is that like, yeah, is that to be commended? Like, oh, neat. You, like, <laughs> you were able to kind of choreograph all these people doing all this different stuff or... But it's just, it also feels so, like, unnecessary. Because that's the other thing with something like Kurosawa or uh, or Bong Joon-ho. Where it's like, there are all these people in the back and stuff. There is all this stuff going on. But it all serves to... Uh, it all serves... It makes it to, co- cohesive. It makes it, yeah, like, an actual... The, a cohesive image of, mm-hmm. like, the main thing that you're supposed to be looking at. Or yeah. what the scene is about or whatever. Um, where this is just like, yeah, it it does seem kind of like like you were saying, I think before, like it's just like, oh, it's New York, it's it's yeah. pe- there's people, it's yeah. it's Some wild crazy characters, greatest yeah. city in the world, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's the thing. We're we're in the afterglow of his performance, but <laughs> yeah, it. I I think that's part of the movie, though. I outside of his that performance it's just like yeah it's a movie that was made mm-hmm. yeah i i i remember the it was it was about how you said that it was most entertaining at the beginning and petered out i disagree i think yeah i think i i do i did like that that opening that you were referencing with the like oh my kingdom, <laughs> blah, 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 that stuff but i mean i think yeah, I kind of, I think it I think it gets better the more ramped up and the more like crazy it gets and like where the the culmination and this the only thing that I will say that I like agree with is that like while I I am going to reference this as a positive because it was just like every time it cut back to him when he's having that conver- he's fucking holding the board <laughs> his mouth like covered in that like raspberry pie filling yeah, yeah. <laughs> Really the really bad fake blood for a movie about vampires <laughs> yeah um and he's has that like hallucination where he's talking to his therapist and every time it cuts back to him <laughs> he just lo- like he just looks like the shit. expressions he has on his face <laughs> and <laughs> but it went on like a little too long. I feel like I was still laughing whenever it cut back to him, but yeah. I was still like, okay, a little bit. Yeah. And that's like, you know, it, it could it serve to be tightened up. And like he chases Alva like out of the office and down the stairs, like at least twice, maybe three times. It's like, just do that one. And right. Yeah. And it's like both times we see like the full extent down yeah. the stairwell, through the door, down the hall yeah. again. It It does not know. And even like that extra in concise. the bathroom. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Who the, the fuck one, are you? The one that looked directly in the yeah, camera as she was walking by. towards it. And then consoles her later. But yeah. it's like, you just left her in the bathroom with a dude that was obviously chasing her. And then she's like, oh, there, there, dear. How are you doing? Yeah. 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 Very bizarre behaviors for like certain characters. <laughs> um. <laughs> Other, other thing, like I, I don't know. This is I don't even know if this is like a negative, but I, I was just thinking of this too. I don't even think it occurred to me like as being kind of weird when we were watching it. But like, I think the last time, you know, unless she was a hallucination the whole time, but I don't think so. Um, uh, the last time you see his actual therapist, not kind, you know, so not yeah. the hallucination. Um is when he calls her on the phone and he has the vampire teeth in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's like talking to him and then she's like, like a dude comes up and like, yeah, max on yeah. her and stuff. And he's like, get off the phone, babe or something like Some, that. Like yeah. hunky 20, 20 year old. And maybe that's why it, it does fit for like, it is a very horny movie because it's just like, they didn't need to, yeah, everyone's that getting it. Everybody's like, getting it in. You gotta. It's like, except for Nicolas Cage, it's it's very like there's Nicolas Cage, but then the rest of the cast is all women. Like the like the main cast, you know. You yeah, that's Alva. True. You have the 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 first girl. 
the first girl that he um like is going out with and then he like ghosts her a couple times and and then you have the the vampire and then his therapist and that's mostly like the cast um so it is like a very women-centric movie but like all of the women are sexualized yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> even yeah. the therapist the, and i that's what it feels like is like okay we've we've managed to sexualize and like get the tops off of all these other women how do we do that with the therapist yeah, <laughs> we'll, yeah we'll get hillary we'll get her with the implication that like yeah we'll get yeah. hillary we'll get hillary yeah yeah it's <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, the characterization of uh, women in this movie is not <laughs> what it'll be known for. <laughs> yeah. That great feminist piece. Yeah, Vampire's, Vampire's Kiss. Kiss. Is this based on something? Uh, yeah, because this real life. Nosferatu. No, yeah. Well, yeah. I did. I did kind of like that the way that he watched the movie, <laughs> and like, then he started like walking around hunched over, like he's like, oh yeah. Like, I did also really like how he moved around. <laughs> yeah, the, it, yeah. It's it's when, like you can spot him a mile away in like the any scene, scene that he in enters. the club. I think does he have the vampire teeth? At that yeah, point? he does. When he's, he's like, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, he looks British. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like looking at the, and and no one like bats stuff. an eye. Yeah, no, everyone is just like, oh yeah, this is, this is just a freaky club. This is how people are. Yeah, but this, I asked if it was based on something because this definitely seems like I don't I don't think it's like based it on could anything. be based on a romance novel. And it's oh, just, it's based. It's based for it's sure. Based. Yeah. But this seems like something that could be based on like a a book or a novel that is probably very normal. And then this movie just makes it ramped up and insane yeah <laughs> it's because they didn't have nick cage that'd be funny if they wrote a book how do you even like articulate that on the page i feel like nicholas cage is one of those guys that like if you try to write a role for him and be like all right go do do something crazy i feel like that's the opposite way to do it yeah right like you got to give him a normal role and just hope give him the space to yeah play around yeah, let him cook, in like it. you said it's not based on anything sorry That's, i was just doing research. i figured as much just Thank from you, straight straight from the yeah. mind of joseph minion <laughs> joseph minions of minions fame <laughs> they're all his little children <clears throat> he it's probably minion if you ask him oh yeah <laughs> it's minion yeah minion minion um yeah i don't i don't i don't even know what time we're at now but like i feel like i feel like if we've exhausted it we've exhausted it i don't yeah yeah there's not much yeah no not much more to say about saying yeah like yeah then we can have the real fun but like Uh, yeah (laughs) yeah like we or halloween even even oil wrestling it's more like the we're just running out because all there is to talk about again is that performance but it is for better or for worse it is a world-class performance yeah if there's um, one thing you can say if there's one thing you can't say about Nicolas cage it's that he doesn't like give his all to yeah. like any performance that he's like charged with doing yeah and he'll yeah i mean it might not be the performance you had in mind when uh Mm-hmm. You started, you know, writing the movie or directing it, but it's the performance that you deserve. And I, and again, like throwing good or bad out the window, I kind of feel like this is the greatest Nicolas Cage performance of all time. It, I can see that. It's the ur, the apex, the <laughs> yeah. penultimate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, okay, so this movie's like 1988. Right. Uh, at the t- has he he hasn't done leaving las vegas yet no that was 95 I he think. hasn't done like wild at heart no i think uh what was it raising arizona was like 87 yeah i was thinking like it it might also be 88 but right around there yeah so it's just yeah. it's just wild that at this you know at this point in his career i mean he's a coppola but he's not yeah <laughs> re- i mean i guess for like consuming audiences He's still kind of just like an unknown. Not not really like an unknown. Oh yeah, eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yeah. 
yeah so it's like i don't know maybe they know him as the guy from raising arizona which i would say is one of my favorite nicholas cage roles yeah it's, I, it's not I, as unhinged and weird yeah no i i love yeah he's great in that movie i love that movie but it's like it, it's just crazy that an actor could feel so passionately about the craft that he could just do that yeah yeah like yeah like that's yeah you, you you see shit like that from other actors who are already established and they'll be like yeah i'm i'm old i'm you know I, i've made my mark so now i can do the crazy stuff yeah yeah but he's just like no i'm just gonna do it <laughs> yeah yeah there's like actors that are like yeah in order to get into this role you know i, I go full method and if my character's from yeah. the 1800s uh, i don't use any electricity and then and then nicholas cage is just like Hell yeah, man! And he just he just does his thing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do this one kind of British. <laughs> <laughs> not not too much though. <laughs> not too much. It's like yeah. uh, like that. Yeah, that's the end of the production meeting. They're like, uh, uh, uh okay. <laughs> um. All right. Do we want to do our yeah ratings? Okay. Um, well, I do want to say we did pick this movie for episode 69 because we, yes. we wanted to find a movie that was equal parts spooky for Halloween, a dud, and horny because 69. Do you think it met all three of those qualifications? Uh, on a scale from yes. 1 to 69, what, <laughs> what do you give oh, each one of those? Okay, okay. Um... I, I i it's it you know what i i kind of think it it falls short in each category a little bit but at the same time i i still stand by like i think this was the best choice that we could have made for yeah, this for this episode. i would say so like there, it's there, not there's as, no perfect 69 yeah it's <laughs> n- it's not it's not as scary as some of or you know i guess one of you is always that's too subjective, tall. but it's not as <laughs> much of a horror movie as some of the other ones we had in yeah. mind. It's not as uh, sixty nine as much as some of the other ones we had, and it's not as much of a dud as some of the other ones we had. But I think like the sum total, yeah, of this is the best, is the yeah, highest. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yes and no, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> It, well, you know, audience, it could have been a Serbian film. Yeah, yeah, we could, could have been a Serbian film. So, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I uh, and and the reason I I was saying like it's not as enough of a dud, a dud spud thing is is like what I was saying before, and I'll, I'm going into my my yeah. my rating now or whatever, is because like much like it transcends the one to ten normal scale, it kind of transcends sputter dud yeah but since we are doing sputter dud it's like it's it's like it's weird because it's like i don't i don't know like it's a spud i'll, I'll just say that yeah. now it's it's a spud but like is it like a yes it's a spud it's mm-hmm. it's like hell yeah this is a ben and arthur spud or is it more like a yeah it just breaks the thing it's like there's it's somewhere in there and yet like rated against the other ones like this is like one of the ones that i would watch the most again like oh yeah i think ben and arthur still tops but it's like it's way up there as far as like w- what i would want to watch again to like laugh at and enjoy it's, yeah, it's way absolutely. up there but it's like is it the spudliest thing i don't know yeah. because there is so much of it that's just like uh it's it's just the one aspect but it is such a strong aspect right um and that's my that's my rating. It's it's a, it's some kind of spud stir. Um, it is so it's it's potato it's, planks to as yeah. far as your or it's you like, know your French fries. <laughs> I was or I was gonna say it's like it's like those like veggie fries that you get. Oh Where yeah. It's like are they are those? Do those count? I mean, they're not, but they are. Yeah. You know, they're fries. It's shaped like a French fry. Yeah. It's oily and hot and salty like a French fry. But is it a French fry? It's not mm-hmm. really a... It's not It's not a potato, though. Yeah. So that's why, you know, it's, it's outside the bounds of, you know... Yeah. 
but it's still I'm like, like really onto something here. Yeah. It still it still follows the parameters, yeah. but it does its own thing. I like that. Okay. I think yeah, this is absolutely a spud for me. Um I think yeah, I agree with you saying that it kind of falls short a little bit in each category. Could have been scarier. I mean, there were definitely like horrific elements. Yeah. Like he raped somebody. I and, raped you know, somebody last night. And she's essentially like <laughs> Yeah, and I and I murdered somebody yeah. last night too. Yeah, you get to hear his groggy, fake, like English accent. <laughs> Just the shots of him wailing. That, that uh, I think that was the biggest laugh the first time we watched it. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was the <laughs> But yeah, him just like walking through traffic, just <laughs> uh, it, was, it was it was great. Yes, yeah, so even on the second viewing, it was still very funny, very entertaining. I think this would fit right in with your like kind of. I say I hesitantly say bad movie night, but I feel like this would be in rotation with The Room and Ben and Arthur and all those yeah, other movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, some of it's a bit of a slog. I think it meanders a little bit. I think it could have been like a tight tight 80 maybe i think a tight 80 yeah. would have been slick but uh spud it's a spud for me love nicholas cage and just about everything i've seen him in so far <sighs> this included hell yeah i think it's a spud for me too um there's not really much to say that hasn't been said already um i don't know what else i could say I about don't this know. movie <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Uh, there, whatever vocal coach he got to teach him that <laughs> that secret unlocked accent that nobody <laughs> nobody else knows what it is yet. Um, Tommy was ill, probably. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a spud. Nice. nice. I'd like to think that the character wasn't meant to be English. Yeah, and Cage was Cage just read it and he's like, "No, I know better." That's well, just that's is he English? I, that's the closest like yeah. thing you, I can get. <laughs> that's just Nicolas Cage's uh, normal talking. Yeah, voice. this is the, <laughs> this is the only film that actually portrays his, how he really speaks. Uh, his normal accent. His normal is, like he's he's got this thing where he kind of bites the corners, bites the corners of his mouth, and yeah. he, pull, he pulls his vowels too. Yeah, and he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. 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 He's I not, don't know. He's not a very like open talker. Yeah, kind of just like. Choose his words a bit. Yeah, I sorta. raped someone last night. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right. Uh, should we take a break? It's sure. Spe- right. Hold Speaking on. Can, of... I, can I do the? Yeah, My dog's sure. freaking yeah. the fuck out. We got a. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on part two. Here's an ad. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's a purely visual bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but are we back though? I'm thinking we're back. I don't know how Butterball sounds. He doesn't really talk. No. I know. It's mostly just the the female and the priest. Butterball is a purely visual feast. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, speaking well, speaking of. Speaking of me. Speaking of, uh, I watched, um, yeah, well, I guess I'll say I, we talked about the original one. Oh. Uh, last two episodes ago or, or was it the next episode was it the one we did with chris no it's not it's not <laughs> okay okay we, we're recording <laughs> these kind of out of or no never mind forget what i just said we're not that was that would come out before that. never mind yeah okay um so i decided to make that my like with you saying that and i was like yeah i kind of want to rewatch that and then the new one coming out that's my that's my horror series that i'm making my way through so far or for this year. So I've watched the first two and then I watched the one that just came out, uh, directed by, uh, David Bruckner. And I gotta say of the, the three that I've seen. And as far as I know, I mean, I think the jury might still be out on the new one, but as far as I know, the first two are the only ones that are considered like good. Yes. I have also heard that. Uh, I gotta say, the newest one is my favorite. Is it? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just and it, it's not by any means fantastic. I gave it, I gave it a seven. Yeah, it's like solid, but like, and this might, this might be blasphemy, but I've, I've never been super like tied to uh, Doug Bradley's Pinhead. He's not like 
just not like he's he's good he's not bad and like he's entertaining you know but he's no robert england as freddy yeah. krueger and also in that I, first movie they're not really in it all that much yeah that's the other thing even in hellraiser 2 they're they're in it more but still less than you would expect yeah like they're not that prominent i think it's after that where they start to kind of become more of the focus so i almost wonder if i'll i'll enjoy the the other ones like not as movies but i'll get more enjoyment out of them with more cenobite action (laughs) um but so anyways yeah this might be blasphemy but um the new pinhead is my favorite pinhead i think it's um jamie clayton who's actually in sensei oh okay that's Um, funny she's the blonde she's one of the main chicks she's okay um is it a female pinhead yeah oh yeah i mean technically the cenobites are all supposed to be androgynous gender yeah genderless androgynous um because they've like mutilated themselves beyond like yeah. any sort of human <laughs> like you know that kind of shit much um, like vampires kiss is outside the realms of yeah. Yeah. regular <laughs> judgment they're outside the realm of human gender and pinhead is a non-binary icon yeah <laughs> um but yeah it's just it's solid like it was it was spooky it was pretty gory uh it it uh i like the kind of new because it is kind of like a reboot and like what they do with the story is interesting um yeah i don't know it just all around it was pretty solid and uh but i i think the real selling point that made me like really enjoy the movie was was pinhead i thought i thought the actress did a really fucking good job i just i love the way like the voice sounded the it and it, and it is a very subtle like low-key performance for the most part because pinhead is supposed to be pretty like all the cenobites are kind of supposed to be like devoid of emotion yeah they're just so detached but there's still little and Doug Bradley's pinhead does this too, but there's little sort of like recognition or like, you know, you'll see him like grin a little bit at, yeah. s- at something going on. And, um, uh, yeah, ex- it expands on the mythos a lot. That's okay. what I like. Um, the, the first one didn't really do that all that much either. Like, yeah. Like when, when Frank comes back, it's, he's very, it, it's vaguely alluded to like, yeah, there are these interdimensional creatures and you're not supposed to be able to escape. Mm-hmm. And I escaped them and I need to stay cause they're going to find me. Yeah. And that's really all the lore you get from the first movie. Yeah. And I think if it was just the single movie, like I would be okay with that. But also like in Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, that's like my favorite part about that is the expansion on the lore. Like mm-hmm. you, you actually go to hell in that movie nice. and there's all that you kind of get, it's still not super in your face. You don't get a shitload, but it, it, you get a little bit more. And in the new Hellraiser, there's, there's more of that too. It's way more involved with like the puzzle box. Like in this one, it has like seven different stages oh. and like each stage that's solved, uh, somebody is like taken so like how you progress is like you have to get other people to fix to solve each stage oh my god so that you can be there and then if you get to the final the seventh stage uh and finish that you get a gift Ooh! you you are gifted with something from leviathan which is the the god of of hell leviathan's in um hellbound too so okay okay um he's in like the old ones um but because it's a gift from the cenobites yeah it's the gift might not be (laughs) what you're hoping for (laughs) because they're really vague the gifts are power or i'm trying to think of the one that the one guy gets um (laughs) like linear linearity or something like that yeah they're Um, like like monkey's paw gifts yeah or or like you know genie wishes or just or more like monkey's paw gifts if you didn't get a wish granted with the (laughs) monkey paw (laughs) it's just the negative part (laughs) um but yeah solid stuff and i am 
looking forward to slash not looking forward to at all the rest of the series yeah i'll, I'll report back when i'm finished i'm I'm curious to read the books too like yeah, I, I know I really clive barker read, i've yeah. heard that name before what, what i don't know what other things he's written that are like I, as famous as hellraiser i think the things that made him like a horror icon is hellraiser and he also did uh candy man okay 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 so he's not That's like another one that i've been wanting to get into yeah, I like the the. I've seen the original Candyman. It's it's creepy. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like the bees, right? Because um, they did they did a new one, uh-huh. and I think Jordan Peele like produced it. And the guy, Something I think like the that. guy who played the original Candyman plays Candyman in this one too. He's in it at least. The guy yeah. from uh, the Man from Earth. Yeah, and that one <laughs> X Files episode. Yeah, Tony Todd. Um, I always forget that that's who that is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and uh, I've never seen it. Uh, Which one? Any of it? <laughs> any of it? You should watch The Man from Earth. Uh, well, I yeah, mean, that's... I've watched some X Files. I, uh, yeah. I'm not saying that. Oh. I haven't seen any of yeah, the. Yeah, I mean, he movies. he wasn't like a main character. He was. I mean, he was in a pretty, I would say, pretty good reviewed X Files episode. Yeah, I would say it's one that I like. Yeah, no, I yeah. like that episode. Yeah, some of them were like kind of forgettable, blah. But yeah. <laughs> um. But okay. Yeah. That's, cool. that's mine. I might watch that tonight. I'll see what Chloe's up Hellraiser. to. Yeah, I'm. I'm very curious to see it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm interested to hear other people's takes was on it, it. Was it like visually dark? Is it on Plex? It's on Hulu. Oh, uh, it is on Plex. Go. Yes. Okay, but it's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Yeah. I, I didn't think it would be on Hulu. <laughs> it, it's a Hulu movie. It's like oh, they're the distributor I didn't know or whatever. That. Oh, I don't know. Cause just I saw uh, Jay from Red Letter Media tweet about it, and he said that like it was like too dark not thematically but visually oh i see like the actual lighting like the color in um, the picture was like he said he watched it on like multiple platforms and it was just like dark i don't know i don't know i'm like, curious yeah i think some i mean if it was ever too dark to me it it seemed like it was intentional like that's, they're it, trying to yeah not show stuff like yeah okay yeah, yeah i was just curious about that um so speaking of stuff that's not dark, uh, I watched the original Creep Show, the uh, combo project of George Romero and Stephen King, uh, starring Stephen King's son in it. And very briefly at the very beginning, he's the kid that's reading oh, the comic, and his dad Joe comes, Hill, yeah Joe Hill, yeah his dad comes in and like slaps him. He's like reading. He's like, oh, you're reading this filth. Yeah. How dare you? And he throws it in the garbage. And then the the iconic like skeleton from like the covers, not the dude from Tales from the Crypt, but right. oh, it made me laugh so hard. The skeleton shows up outside this kid's like bedroom, like floating, and Joe Hill is just sitting there like looking at him like <laughs> like like he's like in love. Like he's like smiling <laughs> okay. and like bobbing his head. He's like, ah, finally someone who understands me. <laughs> But uh, it, was, it was really fun. Uh, it's five shorts that are all, I would say, just about as long as they need to be. Uh, it was the lighting was super cool. It had that yeah. sort of comic book flair to it. Yeah, where I whenever love that there was like movie. a big, uh, like reveal or someone gets killed, there's like this red and green light that flashes behind them, and it or like or like the like spiky like outline behind yes. people yep. as they're like, ah. like I'm thinking of the the one. With like Leslie Nielsen and uh, Ted Danson, Ted Danson, um, which I found that one to be the funniest, but also the one that like made me the most uncomfortable because mm. the idea uh, is uh, Leslie Nielsen. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. He's like a real piece of shit. He's a real piece of shit, but he's like so charming and funny about it. Okay, like he's just like, hey Phil, let me come in. Like, how's it going? He's like, all right, well, uh, I have your wife, and if you ever want to see her again, you got to come take a ride out to my cottage on the beach. <laughs> but he's like, he's doing it in that like Leslie Nielsen yeah, way, where right, he's just right. like <laughs> having a casual conversation yeah, with you. Yeah, that's awesome. And then he ends up like burying Ted Danson up to his head in the beach. In the beach, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then is like, he's like, all right, how long can you hold your breath? And, like the tide's gonna come in. You just might make it out of this alive. <laughs> and then spoilers, he doesn't. Yeah. Oh fuck. <laughs> And then, uh, but no. again, like, but like the two zombie, like aquatic zombies show up 
and again it's like lit as soon as something like weird or supernatural starts happening it's lit in this like kind of like aquamarine like yeah. bluish green and it, it yeah and uh if you go to the imdb page mm-hmm. for uh creep for show. creep show one of my favorite things that I think should be a gift that more people use. Mm-hmm. It's le- it's like during the promotional material for this movie, it'll be like, you know, be amazed at the creeps and things. Be scared for this. But there's one with Leslie Nielsen and it just says cringe on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, That's awesome. It's like so, it's so good. <laughs> um, I think my other favorite one might have been, it's tough. Uh, I like the one with Hal Hollabrook. So he's like a a school teacher and he has this wife that is like super annoying just like uh like women. Yeah, right, ladies, am I right? Uh but that's the one with Fluffy, which is like the the Gabriel ape. Iglesias. That's <laughs> yeah. like the monkey that lives in the crate. Okay, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gabriel Iglesias. Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to just like give you a plot synopsis for all of the the shorts, but uh, they were very charming. They were funny. The visuals were cool. Uh, Tom Savini worked on it. Mm. So, like, a lot of the practical effects were him. Uh, the cast was pretty great. Hal Hollabrook yeah, was great. Stuff. Have you seen Creepshow? I have not. I th- I think you would really dig it. It's just, yeah. like, that's the kind of, like, stuff yeah. we're talking about. Very yeah, visual, it's it's very it. stylistic where it's, like, it's not, like, shit your pants scary, but it's 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 a fun, like, late night, let's get some candy and popcorn and watch just like a creepy movie perfect okay. like drive-in movie yeah. type stuff yeah like i mean i don't know i don't think dawn of the dead is like a good example of that because i think dawn of the dead is legitimately creepy but it's like in that yeah. vein yeah um yeah. so yeah creep show was a lot of fun to watch uh, i saw it at the wealthy theater and they had like a fog machine in the little atrium area and like, oh, cool. it was colored like the the colors from the movie it is a pretty good experience very cool yeah what else we got? Um, Anything else on the docket? Oh, yes. Not much. I haven't. Nothing. No, nothing new, really. I, I, Just watching my stories. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remembered one since you, met, since you mentioned George Romero. Uh, I f- finally watched uh, Carnival of Souls, um, which is an old, uh, like, low budget movie from the 60s that's been on my list for probably over a decade now. Um, Cause it's 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 compared a lot to Night of the Living Dead. Okay. Um. And it's it's very um. Well, I don't know if I want to because I would recommend it. So I don't know if I want to like say, but like if you watch it, you'll probably be like, oh, that's a lot like this story, but not in like a plagiarism way. But right, like, you'll be right. like, oh, that's a lot like this story, and and like yeah, that is kind of what it's like. But um, it it was really, Vampire's Kiss or. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um no it was it was really neat um it was it's a it was a cool little uh like i don't it's a cool little thing i, I can't think of where i'm thinking of from like from <laughs> Microcosm. olden times it was like yeah really low Time budget capsule. but like effective yeah horror movie that the way that it, it's basically like this chick um she um, she moves to Salt Lake City to be a, oh. an organist Terrifying. for a church. Sorry. Was... Yeah, <laughs> um, to be a church organist, and like as she's like driving out, driving there, and then as she's there, she starts seeing this like man, this the ghoul, mm-hmm. um, uh, just like visions of him, and like it's it's it's, it's kind of creepy. There's, now, is there's that a... one of the like Universal monsters? No, 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 it's, it's not it's one of just, those guys. Okay. It's no, it's, I mean, they're called like ghouls or something, but they're, they're just, you know, generic ghost right. type thing. Oh, it's okay. not, they're not anything specific, gotcha. but like their makeup, like they look like it, it. I think part of the reason that the, that it was so spooky, um, like legitimately spooky. Like I, I would say like if they, if you have like a graph of like spooky versus old, this is like the most old and the least spooky no 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 i'm saying like the, i because i think like older movies like cabinet of dr caligari is kind of it it's it's 
or like Nosferatu is probably yeah. the king because Nosferatu is super old, but it's like the way that it's shot, the way that it looks is really creepy. Yeah. It, right. It, it, it's effective. For, it pulls for, off horror without. For what like, its limitations yeah. had, it was effectively scary. But, but I think there's a lot of older movies like that, that like I can still appreciate or like, like as a horror movie, but they're not really scary. Yeah. They really. Don't, yeah. Right. Um, but this one I think is it, it really, it creeped me out a few times. And, and part of it is the way that they make up the, the ghosts or the ghouls or whatever is they look like they are like in like a 1920s, 1930s, like the really heavy eye makeup and like really white skin. Mm. And, there's like parts like the way that he's lit is like super harsh on him and you can't see anything around him. Um, and there's other ghosts too, but it's mainly this one guy. Um, and yeah, so she just like keeps seeing visions of them. And then she, there'll be parts where she like the kind of, the screen will kind of like, woo, 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 woo. and then she'll basically she'll like talk to people and it's like she's invisible like she doesn't exist and then it'll just like kind of snap back out of that and she'll be there again you know oh. but it's like she was like temporarily like didn't exist like a dimensional shift kind of thing yeah kind Interesting. of and then there's there's this old like resort um and i looked it up it was an actual like abandoned pavilion thing on the great salt lake um that she's like drawn to she like she like hmm. needs to go to it um and yeah it's it's also it's like it's under 80 minutes i think it's super short um really really neat old horror movie yeah last year we watched the original um night of the living dead oh yeah on criterion nice. and i think some of it was a little silly it was a little it was a little, little dated yeah but i think the the atmosphere and the suspense and like the claustrophobia of it was like really really effective yeah i like i like the horror from back then that through its limitations had to find other ways to be scary yeah there, there's definitely limitations to this too and like a lot of like the dialogue stuff isn't great and there's like this dude at the apartment that she's staying at that's like constantly hitting on her and cool she, they go to the they go to a bar together and he's he's just very like hey toots <laughs> You know, you, like better, a, you better lighten up. A you, real you Ronaldo a, the heel kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, you keep giving me the cold shoulder and I just want to talk to you. It's like that kind of shit. And uh, yeah, it, and it's just, it's kind of clunky, but it really shines in in the, the spooky parts. Yeah. Um, and right. since it's so short, like I, I I definitely would like recommend it. The, the music is very good. Uh, and again, I think the budget was $30,000. Oh, shit. And... Like for that, oh, wow. it looks really nice. There's some I noticed. There's some. There's a couple. This pretty is still bad. Carnival of Souls. Yeah, so Carnival okay. of Souls. Thirty thousand dollars back then was like one point five mil today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the there's for, yeah for the low budget, um, it looks really nice. There's there's some issues with audio for sure. There's some pretty bad ADR in some points, but like shot really nicely and this is the dude's only movie he he would do promotional like ad stuff for some company in california or whatever um but this is the guy's only feature film and it's like that's well, yeah, i thought you said it was romero it's not romero no no it's just i i associate it heavily with nightmare on elm street just in my brain because it would i said nightmare on elm street <laughs> the, the night of the night, living dead I, yeah night of the living dead um I almost I was gonna say night before Christmas. <laughs> um, yeah, night of the Living Dead because it was maybe on the DVD that I had there was night a commercial the for it, um, or it was just because I saw Night of the Living Dead when I was so young, and then like I would see I like heard about this movie and looked at it, and I was like, oh, there's, it's an it's another black and white movie with like undeady type yeah. people, so it's just kind of in my brain they are linked, um, right, and. Even to the extent that the whole movie, I was waiting for like a certain part, a shot, and I don't know, maybe like ten minutes left in it, I was like, "Oh, that's from Night of the Living Dead." That shot that I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> um, Damn. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's cool. Nice, cool movie. Awesome. Um, I did say I hadn't. I haven't watched anything. I lied. Oh shit. I watched all of. Uh, I think it's Gendy Gendy. 
Tartakovsky's yeah. uh, Primal. Oh, nice. I didn't uh, know you just watched that when we were talking yeah, about ju- it. Yeah, just recently. Nice. Um, I, I think Gendy? I think it is Gendy. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, it's <laughs> awesome. It's... Oh, holy is it shit, new? How incredible. recent is it? Um, the last season I think was 2018. Okay, it's um, that was, old? Holy man, shit! That might, that, I he might did, be. Off. He did like what? Samurai Jack? Yeah. Powerpuff did, Girls. Powerpuff. Yeah, I knew. I know he's like a Cartoon Network. Star Wars: The Clone Wars. He's yeah. He's a big Cartoon Network guy. Which like, did you see that Cartoon Network got sucked up by Warner Bros? Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't know. Yeah. People were people were saying like rip Cartoon Network because they think. Uh, I think I don't know if they're like some something is like closing, but they're basically be, like, being folded into oh, Warner I Brothers was, as a whole. I was way yeah. off on that. Um, so the it premiered in 2019, and the last season just ended this summer. Oh, oh okay. okay, like okay. a couple weeks ago. Is that Shit. is that the last season, or is it well, just the most, the most recent? recent? Okay. Um. The way it ends doesn't leave a whole lot of room for a sequel, or at least not oh. Oh, not okay. not as not as what it is. I guess mm. it ends pretty uh, matter of fact. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it it's a great show. Um, I love Samurai Jack as a kid. I that oh, was yeah. like, that still yeah. to this day is one of my favorites. Yep. Uh, Samurai Jack and the his Clone Wars series is like yeah yeah they really really it, good. It this takes his like art style and uh, just style in general to a whole new level. Um, Most of the series does not have any dialogue, Mm, mm -hmm. like for the at least for the first season. That's Um, very like him. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that well that that too. Uh, The art and just the way everything looks is so crazy. It's a very I compare it a lot in my mind to like Conan the Barbarian, but like Frank Frazetta type of world Mm -hmm. um, where it's like early human history uh, and there's like dinosaurs, but they live with people people and like woolly mammoths and all that stuff. Um, It's primal. Yeah, it's very primal. (laughs) But like the the, he, he just every episode is like all the action and stuff is just so satisfying and it's it's a brutal heartbreaking world that like he set up is it like children's cartoon or is it more like no, adult oriented no, okay yeah. okay absolutely not okay um yeah it's just brutal brutal violence it's super sad it's hell yeah very like gorgeous visuals uh just how his, how all of his stuff is stylized is just awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm just a huge fan for life, and I I would love another season. Um, I they've talked about it, but they said the show would look different. I I, I looked mm. it up when I finished the Interesting. the finale. Mm. Mm. But yeah, it's it's really really good. <laughs> nice. So would you say like on a rating of a primal to sub primal <laughs> <laughs> fully primal cool yeah i have a very specific memory when i was a kid i had my uh, <gasps> appendix removed mhm and i was i remember sub-primal. being primal <laughs> yes yeah, yeah that that was a sub primal experience <laughs> uh i remember being like in the hospital bed because i think i stayed for like a day and the episode of samurai jack that I watched in the hospital was one of those episodes where there's like almost no dialogue whatsoever. Yeah, right. It was the uh, archery one. That's so yeah, weird. The I blind archers. If, that's so weird that you said that. I was like, I was trying to think like, that's the episode that I always go to. That's yep. like one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's a great episode. It was that, that, well, and, then- <laughs> and that's a really good example of that series. Cause everything in that, Cause it's all snowy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, if there's a white snow field, it's like a white snow field. It doesn't have like an outline. Yeah. And just I love how he do, how he works with color and yeah, yeah. outlines and all of his just very stylized. Yeah, awesome his work. his art style. It's like assuming if it's like if it's anything like Samurai Jack and other stuff, it's it has this like simplicity to it, but it's not like simple. Yeah, right. It's like very like it's just angular a very lines. Stark, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's. Uh, 
I love him. <laughs> the other episode of uh, TV that I watched in the hospital that day was Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh yeah, it wasn't the King Ramses one, no. <laughs> but it was it was one where he was on a submarine with uh, the Doctor Katz. Okay, yep. And yep. he was like trying to get them to drink tea, but it was gonna blow up the submarine because it was TNT. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yep. That, that, was another that sounds like Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah. <laughs> another absolutely terrifying show to watch yeah. as a child. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's uh, what's new in my media consumption. In the neck of the woods. Yeah. Do, do you think if the Liver King's appendix burst, would he get a would he get it removed? Or? <laughs> I think the Liver King is so full of shit. <laughs> um. They would just absorb it. And he, he no, I don't mean literal physical shit. I oh, think, that is what I thought. I I think he d- does not live. Like, I think so too. The life that he says. I'm gonna so be too. a liver king right now and take a swig of this beer. <laughs> he just he just smears himself like in shit so he can say that yeah. whenever he goes on and does interviews. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what you guys are talking about. You know, uh, he's this very. Uh, <sighs> I don't want to say Joe Rogan, but Joe Rogan type of oh okay. Joe Rogan of as far as like, like skin tone, <laughs> yeah. What like a <laughs> vaguely this guy Italian? Has a fucking no, a very red, red, fucking oh, hot dog like a skin. Yeah, yeah, hot yeah dog okay, skin. all right. Yeah, he. The only photos he ever posts are where he's like post workout and he's just like red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like like Nicholas like, Cage in Vampire's Kiss when he gets that letter. <laughs> from his yeah. his ex love who's like don't yeah. contact me anymore and he's doing he's doing the deadfall thing where he's like <sighs> yeah <laughs> yeah but liver king is like this alpha male oh, uh, cool. one of those like alpha mindset bullshit guys yeah yeah who only eats according to him only eats like raw meat oh yeah and so in blue chew yeah, yeah probably <laughs> it, his this dude's fucking heart is gonna explode yeah yeah like <laughs> like it's, he gets a paper cut and it yeah. like it's a blood geyser like yeah. a tarantino movie <laughs> roided out just dipshit nice yeah happy halloween eat shit liver <laughs> kids yeah that's <laughs> what <Fuck> we you. <laughs> that's what we stand for yeah oh yeah outros outros but first we got a movie recommendation Boop. oh yeah Shh. oh uh we're doing looking are you looking for the year head <laughs> from 1968 directed by bob balaban Ral- ralston ralston bob raffleson that's it Raffle, yeah. yeah bob hoskins and um it is it is brought in by a special guest uh yeah you want me to do that or do you want to do it i don't care you his name's chris wade his name's chris wade He's... i consider him a friend of mine <laughs> aka an acquaintance uh he is uh the uh, the producer of chapo trap house and introducing which is his music book podcast it's a podcast about books about music that's how he pitches it it's kind of cool but yeah we reached out to him and he suggested head and and a new history podcast that he talks oh, about yeah, him and matt are doing one he talks about on the show that yeah. sounds cool um, yeah they do they do one called hell of presidents and like they do like a specific president per episode and they like deep dive into it matt is oh, a okay. huge history nerd oh cool but yeah um yeah so that'll be next week we're out of we're out of the spooky season um that's so that's uh that's it for this week uh um if oh if you want to watch head it's on fuck what it was on tubi on? it was on tubi I that's watched right it on tubi. Yeah. it's on tubi. tubi i might have watched it on tubi too i think i did um yeah it's on tubi so if you don't want to be spoiled for head if that's something that you can be spoiled for <laughs> um uh, watch it before next week. These episodes come out every Wednesday at 7 p.m. EST uh, on Twitch and YouTube in the video form and as well as Spotify and Apple Podcasts and more in audio form. 
Uh, we also have socials on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Uh, is it? That's it. I, I wonder if it. the mic is picking up my fucking Darth Vader breathing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am your boss, and I wanted her. I don't. Uh, I'm going to give you this task of finding this contract because I know it's hard to find and I don't care how long it takes you to find it because I can't think of a worse job if I could or something like that. <laughs> if I, 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 I can't remember this bit at all, but it's a meme <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. And my name's TJ K J Budget G's and with me as always, as always, <laughs> I am Nick, AKA Dr. Funk on a B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T Twitch. Nice. <laughs> and with me as always. I'm Connor and I have never misfiled anything, not even once. <laughs> How dare you even suggest it? <laughs> bye bye. Goodbye. Uh, bye bye. And a happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs>